Hey guys, in this Spark AR tutorial, I want to show you how you can drag around an object on the screen in your Instagram filter. So let's start. Hey again, so let's create a move aber object here in the Spark AR Studio so we can move around the object by tapping on this screen. So at first we need of course our object in our scene. So we go to our scene bundle, click on up add object and now here we will insert a rectangle object. This automatically will also generate this canvas object for us. So the next step is to import our PNG or JPEG file we need for this here. Yeah for this object. I will import this icon and will yeah, turn off the compression of the textures. So the next thing is of course to add a new asset, a new material. So I will also call this material icon, will set the shader type to flat and then I will choose for the texture my icon I just imported. So now I go to my rectangle and then I set the material to my icon material. So now we have this I can here on the left upper corner, but we want to yeah, move it around. So the next step is to open the patch editor. And now we have to add a few patches which we have to yeah, set up correctly to make this work. So at first I will import the um, device patch. For this I go to my scene, click on device and then drag and drop it into my patch editor. Then we have this patch here in our editor. So the next patch I will add here is the most important patch for this. Um, this is the screen pan patch. So just import this. So now we have those two patches. The next thing we have to do is to import our width, our height and our position of our rectangle object. So for this we go to the left hand side, click on the rectangle then um, move to the right hand side and here we have our width, our height and our position. So on, at R3 click on the little arrow to import it to your patch editor. So the first thing we do here is yeah, to set up our height and width here in the patch editor because now we have to yeah, set up the height and width in the patch editor and not anymore here because yeah we can't do here anything. So. Um, to extract the value, we add a new patch, we will add a value patch and then we will just duplicate this patch. So the standard size um, and width of the rectangle is 100, 100. So I will change this to 200, uh, no, let's say 150 to 150 because my icon is squared. But when you have a rectangle, yeah, just I'm used to values of the rectangle. So now I will just connect the output of the value to the height and then the second output also to the width. That I don't get confused, I will rename my value patch. So just double click on it and will name this height and this will be my yeah, width of course. So after we have done this, we can move on. So the next thing we have to um, create are a few patches. So just follow me along, just yeah, add all those patches to your patch editor because they are yeah, quite a lot. So let's start with a divide patch. We, um, yeah, we need two of them. So just import one and then just copy and paste it. So the next thing is, no, wait, we need three divide patches. So three divide patches. And I will al already yeah, move them around so that makes sense. And the next thing we have to do is to add an unpack patch. Um, and here we have to change the value from vector 3 to vector 2. And now we need also to subtract patches. So just import one and then copy and paste the second. Um, we also need a pack patch. Also set here from vector 3 to vector 2 and then we also need a switch patch. And last but not least we also need a if patch. So here also set uh, um, yeah, the mode from number to vector 2. So the first thing we have to connect is our if patch. 
um, with our rectangle patch. So just connect the output with the 2D position of the rectangle. So now let's go back to our to the beginning. So um, we start here. We will connect the 2D position output of the screen patch, uh, screen pen patch, to the first value input of the divide patch. And as the second value here, we use the um, screen scale output of our device patch. So let's make it here. So the next thing um, we have to do is <clears throat> to connect the, not the other two divide patches. The height goes into the first value of the first divide patch and the width goes into the first value of the second divide patch. So here we will set the second value from one to two. Um, this is just to offset our, yeah, the position of this thing here that it, yeah, moves around better. So the next thing <clears throat> is that we connect the divide patch with the screen pen and device input with the unpack patch. So here the unpack, the first value goes into the first value of the first subtract patch and the second, the Y value goes into the first value of the second subtract patch. So now we go back to the um, divide patches. Here the first output, the height output goes into the um, second value with the subtract of the X and the second divide output goes into the second value input of the sub subtract patch with the um, Y input. So now we are almost done. The next thing is that we pack our our yeah, values again. So the X path goes into the first of the pack patch and the Y path goes into the second value here. So now we can connect the output of the pack patch to the 10 input of our if patch. So now the the object has moved, so it moved back. So we have centered with the with the subtract and the divide patch. We have centered the uh, yeah, center of the rectangle. And now, when we already click here on the on our viewport, we can drag and drop this object around. But when we restart our filter, the object goes back um, to this point. And when you start to filter, the object should already be in place at yeah, a certain point here in our scene. Um, to, to do this, we have this switch patch here left and also this if patch. So at the beginning, when we haven't um, touched the screen, we want that this appears anywhere on the screen. So for this, I will set the else of my if and uh, if patch to 100 and yeah 100 and then restart the filter now the condition is true so it is this but when the condition is not true it will be here so now we go back to our screen pen and here we have a gesture state output this gesture state output goes to the turn on of the switch and then the switch output connects to the condition input of the if then else patch and now when we restart the filter here the icon is here on the screen and when I now touch the screen my icon follows my yeah, my gesture my finger and I can set the position of it so yeah when you want to um, change the starting point just yeah, change the else settings here. So let's say 200, 200. Yeah, so you can play around with the settings. So it will set on the right place. So I hope I could help you with this video. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.